Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today we have a very special unboxing two EVGA GeForce GTX video cards featuring NVIDIA's newest silicon. Based on the Maxwell architecture, we have the GeForce GTX 980 here in the reference design trim, as well as EVGA's very own custom design GeForce GTX 970 featuring the ACX 2.0 cooler. We're going to start off with a look at the GTX 980 reference design. If you want the 970, go ahead and skip ahead in this video. So uh, the retail box is going to tell us some basic information. For instance, you might note that this has a 4 gigabyte GDDR5 memory frame buffer. Also down there in the bottom left, we have something called Super Dynamic Resolution, or Dynamic Super Resolution, depending on how you read that, or Super Resolution, what is it, technology, aha. In any case, super resolution is part of it. And uh, without going into too much depth, I wanted to explain that that basically enhances the fidelity uh, of your screen image when it's rendering 3D, of course, uh, to give you 4K fidelity even at 1080p. And you can find more information about that on the NVIDIA website. Uh, apart from that, we have some of the standards you might expect from NVIDIA, such as uh, game stream compatibility, so you can stream your PC desktop games over to a compatible device, such as an NVIDIA Shield or a Shield tablet. Uh, we also have G-Sync capability built in, so if you have a G-Sync capable monitor, you can connect that up to uh, synchronize your video card's output with the refresh rate of your monitor for a nice, smooth, tear-free, stutter-free gameplay. And also we have DirectX 12 compatibility, um, which was introduced with the uh, original Maxwell uh, that we saw with the uh, 750 and 750 Ti. Although this is a new uh, GPU, so this one's based on the GM204 uh, versus the GM207 that the 750 and 750Ti were based on. Also, some more little detailed specs up here in the top right that I just wanted to run down for you guys really quickly. Uh, so compatibility for NVIDIA's MFAA technology, which is multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing, a new anti-aliasing technique that can uh, deliver a 30% performance boost uh, while maintaining smooth, high-quality edges, uh, it does that by alternating sample calculations across each frame and each, each pixel, and that's 30% better as compared to MSAA, um, which is a bit more of a standard. You also have Voxel Global Illumination, or VXGI. This is part of the NVIDIA GameWorks library, uh, and basically it's going to accelerate dynamic lighting effects for a more immersive experience. So um, enhanced lighting is always going to help with the uh, immersion when you're playing a video game and how that game looks. Let's run down the uh, contents of the retail box first. Uh, we have some documentation, of course, indicating where you should go to download the latest drivers. Something specific on the 900 series, such as where all of your inputs are and what they do. And then a more generic uh, graphics card guide from EVGA. You have the ever-present DVI to VGA adapter. There is still at least one analog connection on this particular video card. You get a Powered by EVGA case badge. You get a couple uh, six pin to Molex connectors or adapters, so if your power supply does not have that by default, you can use these. Uh, it is recommended to have a minimum of 500 watts available on your power supply, so uh, you should probably even go a little bit beyond that if you want to make sure you have some headroom. You also get some EVGA enthusiast built stickers. And lastly, you get this poster, which I'm not going to expand because it's huge, but it's, uh, it's a cool poster. And now on to the GeForce GTX 980 graphics card itself. And if this looks familiar at all, well, that is because NVIDIA has continued to use the very popular and very well-designed cooler that they originally launched with the GeForce GTX Titan. Uh, there's a ton of really cool benefits from this cooler. Um, an aesthetic one, not to start out with the, the coolest one or anything, but uh, is the fact that you get a GeForce GTX logo right there that will actually light up and glow when this uh, card is installed and turned on. Uh, you also have, for instance, a full metal shroud. Uh, you have a polycarbonate window right there, uh, an aluminum fin stack. Underneath, there's also a, a vapor cooler that's down beneath that as well. Uh, the aluminum fin stack on this one has been uh, given a black coating on it, which gives it kind of a meaner look. That was introduced uh, later in the 700 series when the GTX Titan Black actually launched, and the 980 also maintains the sort of black engraved GTX 980 logo up there at the top edge. You have a blower style fan down here, which uh, NVIDIA has done some, uh, a lot of work actually to get uh, superbly balanced to minimize the amount of uh, noise that it generates. And it pushes air across these uh, fins and then ejects it out the back of the card. Uh, and I've noticed this cooler in the past does an excellent job of maintaining a balance between the amount of noise that it generates and the amount of cooling that is actually able to get away with. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the video outs down here on this end. You might notice another carryover here from the Titan Z, actually, this uh, sort of cross, hat, cross hatch they have there for the exhaust vents. Uh, they carried that over from the Titan Z. That looks kind of cool. 
Um, but down here for video outs, we have actually one, two, and three DisplayPort 1.2 outs. You can use those for G-Sync compatible uh, monitors, of course, if you're going to get your G-Sync on. You've also got an HDMI out that's available right there in the middle. Uh, the display ports are 1.2. You also have a DVI dual link that's available right there. That's DVI-D, so it includes both digital and analog signals, so you can use that adapter if you're connecting this to an analog monitor, although you shouldn't do that. I'm just kidding. You can do that. But um, you also have uh, up to 2560 by 1600 resolution uh, supported from the DVI dual, dual link. And uh, the display ports, of course, you can use for 4K. You can also use the HDMI for 4K, of course, but I generally lean towards display port for that. <gasps> hey, hey, look, th there is something different with this cooler as compared to the old one. They have a pretty sweet looking backplate that they've integrated here. Uh, so you have some, some cool grooves going on to give it some texture. That's going to give it a cooler look when you actually have this card installed in your case because you're going to get presented with the GeForce logo, and you're going to have a nice look at that backplate. Uh, you have the NVIDIA Eye that's located right there on the back of where the GPU actually resides. Speaking of the GPU, it's the GM204, so that's GeForce Maxwell. Uh, 204 is, is just the version of the GPU, and typically they'll use that GPU for quite a few different cards, depending on uh, how many of its uh, characteristics are actually enabled or not. Uh, but apart from the name of it, you guys probably want some specs, right? Okay. The GPU features 2048 CUDA cores, uh, a base clock of 1126 megahertz, a boost clock of 1216 megahertz, and uh, this does feature GPU Boost 2.0, which means it's going to automatically overclock itself uh, when temperatures permit to hit that boost clock, and often you'll see it uh, uh, boost itself up even beyond the numbers that you see on the box, which I always thought was kind of cool. Memory clock is 7000 megahertz effective, and you do get 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 integrated. Uh, it's a 256-bit memory interface, and you get 224 gigabytes per second total available memory bandwidth. Uh, you have SLI support with this card. You can see the two SLI fingers up there at the top, so you can do up to four-way. And uh, over here, we also have some video connectors. I'm sorry, some PCI Express graphics connectors for uh, uh, supplemental power for the graphics card. Just two six pins that are needed here, so Maxwell is uh, touting its power savings capabilities. It's a very efficient GPU, so only two of those six pins are needed, uh, and uh, NVIDIA is recommending a 500 watt power supply minimum for this graphics card and the rest of your computer, of course, and I generally recommend going a little bit above that just to give yourself a bit of headroom and also so you're not uh, maxing out the power supply that you choose to use. Hey, look, I just realized that there's been this plastic piece on here. I'm going to peel that off. Ooh, that's nice. Now we can get a better look at that polycarbonate window. Sweet. Um, but that pretty much rounds it out for the GTX 980. Again, this is the reference design, so uh, this is currently sold by uh, EVGA, at least this particular version that I'm looking at here. Uh, and this does follow the reference design specs as well as the reference specs for the GPU speeds and memory frequencies. And now we move on to the GeForce GTX 970. This is the superclock version from EVGA, which means it is overclocked right out of the box. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, as far as the specs and features and NVIDIA-centric uh, type things, the compatibility we already mentioned with the GTX 980, you'll find all that compatibility here as well. So um, all the stuff like dynamic super resolution, uh, GeForce experience compatibility, MFAA, or multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing, G, uh, game stream, G-Sync Ready, DirectX 12, GPU Boost 2.0, Adaptive V-Sync, all that good stuff is included as well as the new features like Dynamic Super Resolution and Voxel Global un Illumination. But since this is an EVGA card and it's a custom-designed EVGA card, it features the ACX 2.0 cooler. There's a little bit more information about that right here. Um, I'll, I'll go over these percentages here. It's going to be 26% cooler, 36% quieter, 250% lower fan power and 400% increased fan lifespan. Now the fan power is one of those things that uh, you wouldn't necessarily think has a huge impact, but when you're overclocking a graphics card, you can set a power limit. And uh, the power limit includes the entire power draw of the entire card. And by using these uh, different fans that use less power, and by going with a two-fan solution instead of, say, for example, a three-fan solution, they've reduced the amount of power that the fan ex itself takes. And that means that when you overclock this card with a power limit, there's going to be more power available for the GPU itself. So that's uh, one of those little added features that EVGA has integrated with the ACX 2.0 cooler. Quick look at the back of the box, but again, everything you got with the 980, you're going to get here too.
We're going to move right along to the GeForce GTX 970 video card itself. I'm skipping accessories because uh, if you watch the 980 portion of this video, the accessories are pretty much exactly the same. So you can jump back there to check out what you might receive. Uh, you will also be getting a driver disc along with this card. We didn't get those because we got the cards so early that uh, they weren't allowed to put those in the box yet. Um, but here's the 970. Again, this is the custom design with the ACX 2.0 cooler from EVGA. This one features uh, a plastic shroud on the outside and then those, those two fans that we already talked a little bit about and you guys got the exploded view of. Uh, another thing about the fans is they've uh, upped the fin count. They're using 11 fins now as opposed to, I believe, 9 uh, was how many they used in the previous version of the ACX cooler. Uh, and again, that's just going to help to improve the amount of airflow that's pushing down over the aluminum fin stacks that are down below it to help dissipate the heat. And you'll notice this is also an open shroud design, so we have some open uh, spaces down here, particularly at the back, and then of course down here on the uh, exhaust that's near the video outputs as well. It's going to push some air out that direction. Another thing EVGA likes to do is give you lots of little covers when they give you graphics cards. So those are, those are kind of all over the place here. Let me pop these off so I can show you guys the video outs. Uh, the video outs are slightly different here than they were with the 980, although these probably will look familiar if you've looked at the 600 or 700 series of graphics cards. So you're going to you're gonna have a uh, DisplayPort 1.2 out, also a HDMI out, and then you get a couple DVI dual link outputs. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, one of them here is DVI-I, uh, which is integrates both. Actually, wait, which one's which? Yes, the lower one is DVI-I, um, so that in integrates uh, both the digital as well as the analog. Top one is DVI-D, that's digital only, so you'll notice it doesn't have the little extra plugs that are located down there on that side. So if you're going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, use it with the lower one there. You can, uh, again, do four displays at the same time with a single graphics card. You can power three of them for 3D gaming, and you can use the fourth one as a companion display. Of course, this card maintains PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility. You can see the edge connector right down there. The PCB on this card is uh, pretty much a black in color. And you'll notice on the bottom here, you can see some of the components, like some of the memory modules that are uh, stacked on right there, as well as the GPU. Well, you can't see the GPU, but it's located on the other side of those uh, four Phillips head screws right there. Uh, for your memory on this one, you do get four gigabytes of GDDR5, again, just like the GTX 980. Uh, the GPU itself is a little bit cut down, as you might expect for a slightly uh, lower in the tier card. Uh, you get 1,664 CUDA cores with this card, a base clock of 1,050 megahertz, and a boost clock of 1,178 megahertz. But wait, those are the reference specs. This is a EVGA GeForce Superclock card. You get an SC logo right there as well, which means that it comes overclocked out of the box. So instead of a base clock of 1,050, you get a base clock of 1,165. And instead of a boost clock of 1178, you get a boost clock of 1317 megahertz. And again, depending on how your GPU Boost 2.0 is working and depending on how cool you actually keep your case and the components inside, uh, you can even push beyond that. And of course, you can use EVGA's Precision X overclocking utility if you want to overclock these cards even more. Heck, that's a lot of fun. Uh, but let's talk about video, or I'm sorry, vi uh, power requirements. You got a couple PCI Express graphics connectors there. Again, just maintaining those two six pin graphics power requirements. Uh, you again get support for SLI. So there's your two SLI bridges down there. Um, out of the box, we're going to say four way SLI compatible because it does have those two connectors. Um, I'm going to say at least three way compatible is what you're going to get here because uh, depending on how NVIDIA decides to go, with their uh, tiering of their graphics cards. We don't always have four-way support all the way down the line. But you should at least be able to do three-way. And honestly, four-way um, is probably something that folks are going to be more interested with the 980s anyway, because that's more of a top-of-the-line solution. Uh, but there's a quick overview and a wraparound look at the EVGA GeForce GTX 970 with the ACX 2.0 cooler. Uh, very, very nice technology here. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to point out before we uh, ditch this card is that it is not quite as long uh, as the uh, typical 980 or the 980 or the 970 reference. So here is a uh, quick and not too precise accurate uh, measurement for you, uh, but as you can probably see right there, it's only about 9.5 inches long when measured from the bracket. So you're going to have a bit better compatibility depending on what case you choose, especially if you're working in a bit more of a tight or confined space. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. You can find links to both of these video cards if available down in this video's description. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button and leave me a comment in the comment section to let me know what you think of the new 900 series graphics cards. Specifically, what do you think of EVGA's take on the EVGA GeForce GTX 970 with the ACX 2.0 cooler? Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.